Hello. So I'm here to speak about uh, the project SC Fair, which is about standardizing and providing stewardship for single cell metadata. So as probably you are aware, uh, single cell data, managing single cell data uh, brings a whole new level of complexity as regular bulk RNA data in the past. So for instance, if you only look at the processing pipeline for SC RNA seq data to obtain the information about the cell type that you have in your data set, it requires many complicated steps in computation. So you need to use the raw data, you need to filter the cells that have duplets or that are empty, you need to filter the genes to get a good gene expression signal, normalize, scale your data between your cells, uh, then to perform dimension reduction, to perform a cell clustering, and finally you get to the point where you can perform a differential expression analysis between your cell clusters, look at the functional enrichment, and at the end of the day, you might be able to assign a cell type to your cell clusters in your analysis. So all of that requires a lot of manual expertise. It's very labor intensive. It's also highly error prone. Uh, so that adds up a whole new level of complexity to capture this information because all those steps will impact the result of your analysis. Uh, also, there is a lot more complexity in the construction of the library. That was mentioned yesterday during the, the, uh, the talk about Array Express. So this has all these parameters, so the strand selection, the library type, the RNA population that you capture. Uh, but for single cell RNA-seq, the more complex part is to access to the barcode information, the UMA information you need to know on which strand it is, uh, at which position on the strand, uh, on which read, sorry, it is, at which position it is. So again, you need to have access to this information if you want to reanalyze single cell RNA seq data. And most of the time, you don't have access to this information. Uh, then you have also a challenge to capture the cell type. So you might have uh, assigned cell types, uh, be able to reanalyze your data. But then you have the complexity of the biology and of the ontologies. So for instance, I take example from the fly cell test because we reanalyze extensively this data set. Uh, and for instance, we, we, we noticed in the annotation that there were ambiguity to distinguish between different neuronal subpopulations. So here I took the example of the neuron T4A and B and T5A and B. And basically to distinguish these cell types, it's very complicated. So they're just providing these four terms to some clusters because they couldn't distinguish between them. Or also we discover constantly new cell types and the cell ontologies, they are lagging behind. So for instance, we wanted to use a common term to, yeah, to define uh, octopaminergic neuron and tyraminergic neuron. We wanted to have a common parent to these two types of neurons, but it was not existing. So we had to annotate to neuron instead, which was very imprecise. And then again, taking the example of the fly cell atlas, they apply different type of clustering, what they call a stringent clustering and a broad clustering, and the results are very different depending on the clustering you, you use. So that's why we feel it's very important to be able to capture the information also about the analysis pipeline because it highly impacts your result. So, and then also, yeah, uh, we have access to access the barcode files if we want to realize uh, data sets. We need to link the barcode of the cells to the annotated clusters which is not always available. We need to access the BAM file, the FASTQ file, and sometimes the files were corrupted on SRA and we couldn't use them. So for all these reasons, we want to build a platform called SCFAIR, uh, which is funded by the Swiss Confederation. And as the keynote this morning presented, we want to capture the FAIR data at the source, at the user source. So we want to build a platform providing tools so that user could bootstrap the annotation of their single cell data set and provide data stewardship so that we can check the data submitted by user and get back to them, to train them, to help them, to provide accurate metadata, allowing us to reuse the data set they produce. Because it happened to us a lot of the time, we couldn't access the barcode, we couldn't reanalyze the data. And for instance, there is another 
big data set similar to fly cell atlas. I think it, it, it's in, in China that it was produced and we cannot access the barcode information, we cannot reuse this data set. So this is uh, the idea of this project, SCFAIR. Uh, we are very well aware that there are really good resources out there already trying to achieve uh, this aim. Uh, so we started to collaborate with the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative uh, people at Human Cell Atlas and at Cell by Gene. Cell by Gene has a very similar philosophy of providing data stewardship to users uploading their data set to sell by gene. Uh, but it's mainly focused on human and mouse, and we want to expand to pretty much all animal species, so we start to collaborate with them. Uh, I would like very much to collaborate also with the provisional cell ontology, so I know David is here, and uh, if we can discuss at some point, that would be great. Because, yeah, the cell ontology tried, you know, to have established terms, and it's very lagging behind all the new cell types discovered. So I think we need some effort. So provisional cell ontology also capture the marker genes defining the cell type. So we absolutely need that. I was very interested also about bio studies yesterday talk. There are many resources like that. Uh, so we would like to collaborate with them and integrate with them. Uh, just to give you a brief example. So as a starting point, uh, we are the developer of the gene expression database BG in which you can retrieve all the annotation that we perform. So we have re-annotated the fly cell atlas, and you can learn more about that at a presentation this afternoon at uh, 2.20, uh, because we use it to build uh, a reference data set for, for machine learning algorithm. Uh, but then at this URL, you can browse all our, our re-annotations. So you can see for each cell type the precise annotation, uh, you can see the technology used, that it was a single nuclei data, for instance. Then you can see the level of expression for each gene in these cell types. And you can also access a H5 AD file, where you will retrieve for each cell the annotation and the expression levels of all the genes. Um, yeah, and so our aim now is to disseminate our effort to start collaborations with other resources. So there will be a workshop at BC2 in Basel, in Switzerland, in September, about SC Fair, where we would like yeah, to see, for instance, David, maybe, or yeah, let's talk later, and, uh, and to talk with existing resources that are present here. So please come visit the poster 30 or 32 today. And uh, yeah, you can see the data annotated already on the BG website. And this is a collaboration with the ASAP resource which capture the analysis pipeline metadata. Uh, so this is the BG team working on the creation side, and then there is the ASAP team working on the pipeline analysis side. Thank you. Thank you. We have time for maybe one question or two short questions. Are there any in the audience? Uh, thank you. Nice talk. Uh, more comments on a question. I always wanted to say that. Uh, you mentioned that you, 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 you remap the notation from the fly cell atlas using Uberon and CL uh, ontologies. Uh, we absolutely need to talk uh, later today because uh, you cannot use only the, the coverage of fly cell types in the cell ontology is absolutely not enough. So you cannot use only the cell ontology. Uh, and, and that may explain some of the problems that you may have to, to distinguish, uh, to, to, be, to, to have the correct terms to annotate all the hundreds of clusters that they have in the fly cell atlas uh, data set. So we, we definitely need to talk uh, l later today uh, about that. I, I totally agree, but this is why we use the composite metazoan version of Huberon. It means that when the, the term does not exist in the cell ontology, then the species-specific terms are still present. So we both use a combination of FBBT term and CL term when the exact mapping exists in CL. Otherwise, we still use FBBT. So that's the work of Chris Mengel and his team. Uh, so we use the complex composite metazoan and not pure CL Uberon ontologies. 
Thank you again, Frédéric. Thank you.